All right, everybody, I've made my way over to the EVGA suite, and we are here to talk about all the new stuff that EVGA has brought to the table. In fact, uh, I see a couple of video cards. Uh, specifically, looks like one from Kingpin. Uh, Jacob, <laughs> just jump right in, man. What do we got here? Sure, so this is the, the new GTX 980 Kingpin edition. So Kingpin is an extreme overclocker. He helped design this card. Um, a couple of uh, new features that we added to this card. First of all, it does have an RGB LED. You can customize. This is like kind of like disc Christmas, mode. Christmas or disco mode, but <laughs> we, you can customize the uh, the color of the LED from the EVJ Precision software. We also uh, have a uh, more power inputs here, so we have dual eight dual eight pin plus a six pin power input. Um, another kind of cool feature about this card is it is a single slot design. I mean, yeah, obviously with this fan, it's, it's dual slot, but with a water block, you can easily make it a single slot design, and we will include a single slot bracket in there as well. Perfect. It's, uh, it's 14 power phases. It's really designed for uh, extreme overclocking, and it has a pretty cool feature that uh, helps regulate the temperatures on the memory. So when you're, like, pouring LN2 and trying to keep the memory a little bit higher temperature, it has a new feature that helps you do that. So you were explaining that to me. The basic reasoning is that I... I understood that the memory can't get too cold or otherwise it underperforms and you need to kind of it could cause it could cause stability issues if okay. you get the memory too cold uh, the GP you like to keep cold with the memory you typically want to keep it a little bit warmer so uh, the new feature on this card helps you do that Excellent. All right, uh, and also I noticed that you have a new 970 card. This is a, a new For the Win edition, right? Yeah, so this is the GTX 970 FTW Plus. Well, the plus so, right. um, it, first of all, it comes with a backplate on there. Okay. Um, we made a lot of improvements on this card uh, compared to the previous version that we had. We have a higher power target, so more power for the GPU. It has an 8 pin and a 6 pin power input. We also made some improvements to the actual heat sink design. So it uses a, a straight heat, heat pipe design. So the heat pipes go straight along the card uh, from the left or from the right to the left. And what are the advantages of going so straight? So that is scratch? a more efficient type of heat pipe. And uh, actually, just the heat pipe alone is able to shave about 6 degrees Celsius off the GPU. Nice. And uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, ACX 2.0 cooling, which is double ball bearing fans, gives you four times longer lifespan. And uh, it also has a three phase. So the motor in the fan is actually three power phases, which uh, is significantly lowers the power consumption on the fan. Nice. And uh, that is actually very important for uh, anything later than Kepler, because you have, a, you have a power ceiling, your power target, and that includes the fan power consumption. So if you're able to lower the fan power consumption, you can increase the power available for the GPU. Yeah. Yeah, that actually uh, is something I'd never really considered. Yeah. Obviously, fans, you can make them more efficient, and therefore the power draw for the card and as a whole will go down. Right. That's awesome. So we uh, turn around here to another section of EVGA's suite, and I, and I found what looks like a, an all-in-one cooler for a GTX 980. Yep. Nice. All right. So, uh, Jacob, go ahead and take it away. So uh, this is a, an all-in-one cooler for the GTX 980. It has a fluid inside of it. Uh, the radiator is already attached to it. Nice. And it's able to significantly lower the, the GPU temperatures on the card. Uh, pretty much almost cuts it in half. So nice. About 40C then. Yeah, okay. right around 40, 45 degrees Celsius. Um, you know, we plan to offer it in two different models, an upgrade kit, which uh, will have the cooler, radiator, everything attached, plus a shroud. And then we also have the card plus the shroud and the cooler already pre-installed everything. Excellent. So that's a little bit easier. People want to buy it already pre-installed. Uh -huh. Otherwise, probably isn't too difficult to install one of these. Yourself, yeah, right? not, not at all. I mean, there's there's four screws that mount the cooler. The base plate, you don't need to take the base plate off. That stays attached to the card. And the only other thing you need to do is swap out the shroud. And uh, that's really about it. Awesome. And obviously, the blower is going to continue cooling out down the VRMs and the memory. Yeah. But the cool thing about that is because the GPU temperature is so low mm -hmm. that the fan really doesn't spin very fast by default. I mean, you can change it if you want. But Excellent. it doesn't need to spin very fast. It's just cooling the VRM. All right. So you guys also introduced uh, some more peripherals, I should say, and more specifically, a new keyboard, a mechanical keyboard, the Z10. Right. Uh, so you have mechanical switches in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, reds, I think you it's, were saying It's reds. Here? Yep. OK. Uh, but one of the main features about this board, with this uh, keyboard is actually Actually, just the LCD screen that you've yeah. added. Now, what are the different things that I can actually put in? So uh, we have uh, integrated LCD function, so it'll tie to EVJ Precision, which is our overclocking and graphics card monitoring software. So you can monitor the graphics card temperatures, um, clock speeds, even the frame rate. You can monitor on the on so the LCD much screen. Everything through Precision, though, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Excellent. and anything on Precision you can monitor through the screen. Okay. Any idea that if you'll open it up maybe to third party? Or um, yeah, we certainly plan to add more functionality. Um, by default, it also has a few other features like. 
it has a timer that you can use, um, and a few other ones here and there. But the the I think the the biggest one uh, on launch will be the precision functionality, and we'll continue to uh, try to add more there. And obviously, because it's a gaming keyboard, you also have uh, looks like five different uh, programmable keys. Yeah, seven seven keys. Oh, so seven total. Two more here. Okay. Um, those can be programmed from the software to do any set of macros or shortcuts that you want. That's what you'd anticipate, right? Mm -hmm. Out of any kind of gaming keyboard. Um, so then you also have three more mice too. Right. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and go over that. I think two of them were infrared and one of them was a laser. Right, so we have uh, we have a new, so we launched the X10 uh, back in July, and so we're introducing uh, X5 and X3, which are a step below that uh, at a very aggressive price point. So we have an X3, uh, X3 mouse, it's optical sensor, and then we have an X5, one optical and one laser. And uh, you know the X3 will be the lowest uh, end that we offer, door. and then we have the X5, which is a, a, a step above that one, and then we have, of course, the X10, which is our highest end model. Awesome, Jacob. Well, hey, thanks so much for taking the yeah, time to speak with us you. today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll catch you around at CES at some point. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs>